Today in the news, we got a new wavy GPU and a new font, Raptor Lake being premature, and a repeat of Alder Lake. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. Now, this one is a bit of a nothing burger when it comes to news. Yep, that's a word apparently. Anyways, the box art and pictures of a next generation Zotac card just popped up, and it's the RTX 4090. Now, first of all, this GPU looks pretty sick. I kind of got tired of the angular design over the past generations, so this flowy, wavy, round design is definitely appreciated. But the second thing that caught my eye is the new font. The GeForce font has been the same for a decade now, literally since the GTX 600 series from 2012. And now, it's this new updated one. It's a lot more bubbly than I expected, but I kind of like it. It's a tiny piece of news, but I found it interesting. Moving on, let's talk Intel. The company is currently holding their tech tour of 2022 in Israel, and they shared some pretty interesting info on the next gen of CPUs. First, Raptor Lake is literally a baby compared to other architectures. It seems like Intel knew that delays would happen for their Meteor Lake processors, that's the chip that uses Intel's tile or chiplet system, and because of that, they started working on Raptor Lake. Raptor Lake wasn't even on the roadmap until two years ago, which is an insanely short amount of time to develop a CPU. Thanks to the backwards compatibility with Alder Lake though, Raptor Lake was born. Dr. Ian Kutchess, who is currently at the event, also shared some extra info on the performance numbers. Apparently, Raptor Lake would have a 41% improvement in multi-core performance and a 15% improvement when it comes to single-threaded workloads on the spec int benchmark specifically. Given that Intel is in changing the architecture as much and are really just doing efficiency tweaks and bumping the frequency for Raptor Lake, it doesn't look like they'll be able to sandbag here for these single-threaded workloads. Speaking of frequency though, Raptor Lake would apparently be the first processor to cross the 6 GHz barrier stock. That's huge, going above AMD's 5.7 GHz on their highest end model, the 7950X. Now, this could be limited to a future KS model that could arrive after AMD. AMD's 3D chips are announced, but I'm just speculating here. And of course, the frequency scaling across cores is going to be different. Hopefully, Intel improves their frequency scaling because on their current platform, hitting the max turbo clock speed is only possible when stressing about two cores. According to a leak by Red Gaming Tech, on two cores, the 7950X can sustain 5.6 GHz plus, and the fall off after that is not that dramatic. So yeah, what are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. Also, in Intel news, it looks like the 13th generation won't have all new CPUs. Like, all the improvements that make Raptor Lake Raptor Lake won't actually be in all of the Raptor Lake processors. Alright, let me explain. A leaked slide that came out yesterday shows Intel specifying this. Increased L3 Intel Smart Cache on Core i5 desktop processors and above. And increased L2 Cache on i5K processors and above. This points to any CPUs under the 13600K, so the 13600 and under, will essentially stay Alder Lake processors. We can tell because one of the main differences between Alder and Raptor is the cache structure. They might have more cores though, so that's cool. Like the 13600 might be the uh, equivalent of last gen's 12600K with 10 cores, so 6P and 4E. Now, thankfully, Alder Lake is late in its life, which means that the silicon quality should be higher about now. So even though they are reused, the clock speeds on the lower end models should go through the roof. It's just a shame that it might not get the power savings that Raptor Lake has. So what are your thoughts on this? Let me know down below. Then, it's been a while, so let's do our free game check. First of all, Ubisoft Plus. Yeah, it's not a game, but from now until October 10th, you can have a free trial of the service. That's four weeks to explore over 100 games. Personally, I'm definitely going to try it out because there's a couple of games I missed out on, like the latest Far Cry, Assassin's Creed, and Watch Dogs. If you guys have any recommendations from the service, let me know, I'd love to try out some of the your, your best rated games. If you own an Amazon Prime account, you can also get 8 games for free, including Football Manager 2022, Shadow of Mordor Goat Edition, and Assassin's Creed Origins. So definitely check those out. 
Oh, and uh, just as a side note, uh, the person you see on screen right here is Robert Halleck. He's been very informational and a big part of AMD uh, during the whole time that I was making YouTube videos. So I just wanted to shoehorn this in because I thought I'd give him a shout out. After 12 years at AMD, lows and highs, Robert Halleck has left. It's a sad day for AMD, but uh, I'm sure he has some bigger things to fry or fish, I guess. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you wanna talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video, right here to divide by zero. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.